Mickey, good afternoon. How you doing, Adam? Good to see got you again. Plenty to talk about today. Um, you just got back from Box Nation. Yes, yeah, I was at uh, Box Nation with uh, Senior Byfield today, uh, who's preparing for his Southern Area title fight. Um, he boxes Sammy McNess. Very intriguing fight. Um, I'm amazed they put McNess in such a testing fight so early. Um, me personally, I probably would have waited a little bit longer. But as a boxing fan, First year's at Byfield's manager, I've got to say, well, I like the fight being made now because uh, I think you know, Byfield's had more experience with 10 rounders and uh, that will give him a, a, at least, um, in some people's eyes, a good chance of uh, upsetting the apple cart and beating unbeaten McNess. Um, as a fight fan, I like the fight because I think it's a much more competitive fight um, or it intrigues me more because a lot of unknowns, you know, like Byfield coming in, uh, he's had a uh, a, I'd say a, a modest amateur career and then he's turned pro and I think he really raised a lot of eyebrows in the fight with uh, Arthur Herman where he was judged to lose but I actually had him in front, I thought he won it. Um, he then won the Southern Area title in a, a, an absolutely fantastic fight with Eric Ocheng and uh, defended it against John Brennan with a stoppage win, who was a West Ham fan, and now he's fighting another West Ham fan, so you see West Ham. You're, uh, we've also got Daryl Williams there, next week, and I know you're going to do a full review of that. Yes, we'll, we'll go through the Daryl Williams, Jermaine Smile uh, second bout. I just saw today a letter came inviting Daryl to the British Boxing Board uh, Control Awards. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they gave that as the fight of the year. That, that fight. I mean, even from a, a neutral's point of view, they were going crazy for it, you know what I mean? On my uh, iPad, I have a little beep that goes off when uh, someone tweets me or, or sends a message. And people were sending messages to Daryl, not even to me, but mentioning my name in those tweets. So I, that's probably about a third of Daryl's tweets, or 25%. And my iPad was like, ding, 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 ding. They were going crazy for it. So the analytics for that uh, on... on Line. On the subject of analytics, you've got an article behind you on the website. Our new look website, which is um, gaining followers now in leaps and bounds. And this, writers. And writers, new writers that we've, we've brought in. And uh, this one here, I'm to get Steve Fearon. Steve, yes, correct. And new writer. What I really like about this is that it's edging towards a scientific approach, the stats. I'm a massive stats person, punches per round, power punches per round, percentage of punches that land, percentage of head shots, percentage of body shots, uh, how often they lead off, how often they wait for the other person to leave off, how many feints they show, um, whether they move to the left before they throw the shot, or if they move to the left when they want to break, all these things. I like recording them and analysing and going over and I can see there's some of that here. I'm actually looking forward to working with this guy because I think that, that that's a, um, it's a very beneficial approach that is quite new in boxing. You never used to really hear of it or you heard of it and didn't really practice it or see it. A lot of boxing fans prefer a sort of more emotional response to, to things. Yeah, it's nice yeah, to have yeah. to have the, uh, the other when, side of it. When you're scrutinising these fights, like, to the point of bursting, you know, I mean, I... I Sometimes I close my eyes and I can still see in front of me the things that I've been studying and the combinations and what, and you become obsessed with it. And I think having this kind of uh, data um, is the way forward. It's, it's, it, it, it certainly can give, give the fighters an edge, and in the training and the preparations can give us, you can work out what, how to optimise the guy's performance. So looking forward to that. And if you, if you go to hellraiserboxing.com, you can see the article. You can see, um, Certainly a step in the right direction for me. There's plenty more writers on there as well, adding people. And we, we're getting a lot of new writers, yeah. Like, 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 so good, good for that. One bit of news this week <laughs> that really uh, really got to me was the, the, the Lomachenko and Rigondo. And it, it sort of, in a way, it highlighted to me how unfair our sport is. Because Rigondo is without doubt. In our generation, he is the king of the Who Needs Me club. He's the most avoided fighter. I remember a few years ago, Frampton, uh, you know, they, they didn't make the fight. Um, I saw on, online, don't always know what to believe on the, the stories on the websites, random websites, but I saw apparently that 
Rigondo is accepted to go up to £130 to, to, to fight. Um, yeah, £8 pounds from, from what he lost weight in it. And to me, there's shades there of the Kell Brook fighting GGG. I think he wanted the mega fight so much, and knowing his weight, maybe it wasn't a draw, he didn't, they couldn't monetize it to make it worth everyone's while to take the risk. And he seemed to be waiting and waiting and waiting without a fight. And then suddenly up comes Gennady Golovkin. And I, I thought, the moment I heard of that fight, and you start hearing straight away, you know, some journalist or some crackpot will come out of somewhere saying, oh, but Kell Brook's got the perfect style to beat GGG. And he probably, if he was the same size of him, he probably has got a style to cause him problems, but he's not. And he's far smaller. And so do you think that's the same thing applies to Rick I, I felt like uh, Kell Brook was selling out, that he just decided, right, I'll just go for the money now. A bit like a journeyman, but a very high class one. And that's, that's how I see Rigondo here. If he fights him at 130, because I, I think uh, he, I mean, he is spectacular. His defence, I mean, if you, I've seen fights where he's done stuff defensively, and if you slow down the action and watch it in slow motion, his defence is neon magical. It's impossible to, to, to have someone that could be so evasive and so good at blocking shots and, and moving and positioning the opponents. But it feels to me there's shades of what happened with Brook. You know, I think he's waited and waited and waited. He's not getting any chasing younger, a payday. Long amateur career. And I think now he's just thinking, I want some money. And probably people around him as well. You know, they want money. And uh, I, I don't think... I think he can give Lomachenko a, a hard fight early on. But it doesn't look early signs of that Lomachenko is not going to take it. Do you think... What do you think will happen? Um, I think if he fights him at 130 pounds, I think will take it. Um, the, the, the problem is that you've got two guys there, neither of them really speaks proper English. If you watch them, you follow them, you can see that they, they don't really speak the, uh, the language at all. Uh, it's not their first language. So marketing that fight and selling it and trying to believe that a guy from Cuba has got a genuine beef with a guy from Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, how did, they, how did they end up hating each other so much or antagon And, you know, they, they can barely sort of communicate in, in, in English so um, getting fans to buy into it is, is going to be tough obviously they can get people to put you know translate on, on yeah. there but it's just not the same as when you've got two guys who can sort of bounce off each other in that way um, in terms of the fight I think uh, I mean, you've got a size of Lomachenko when it happens I mean certainly if it gets made we'll do an analysis of it again, yeah bring some statistics into it and, and look at but I just think uh, at that weight Lomachenko grind, grind, grind him down and um, how long is Rigondo going to wait? You know, he waited for Frampton probably thinking that eventually he'd want to unify the title against him or that didn't happen. Uh, he's waited longer since then. He had a big disappointment the other week with the late punch. Um, I mean, that, so yeah, sticking with that, it's been ruled a no contest, that, that thing. Well, yeah. I, how, what's your perception? I know you've seen it. What's your perception of the... Uh, yeah, no, he, he, he was a stupid punch to throw. The bell goes and he hits him after it. Uh, I don't think he did it intentionally. I think he did it by accident. But you've got to be more careful than that. You know, it's very clumsy to throw that, that shot. And mm. he, he definitely lands after the bell. What can you do? You know, he, he, he... Do you think it's good that they've gone back and looked at the decision and changed it to a no contest? Yeah, it's fair. I think that's fair. It was after the bell. But he was dominating the fight. And I think he would have got him out of there anyway. It's just a shame that he... he clumsy like that. Um, one thing that we've got to mention, right, if you bet on the Daryl Williams versus uh, Jermaine Smile or a senior Byfield versus Sam McNess fight, uh, you can call uh, Star Sports and if you mention Hellraiser Boxing, they will enter you into a prize draw and you can win four ringside tickets to a Hellraiser show. Wow. That's some prize, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how the betting goes on those fights because there's going to be plenty covering that on the website, so people can stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm getting calls already uh, about it. You know, it's a fight that, you know, there's no selling. After that first fight, everyone that's even heard about the first fight is going to want to see uh, Daryl Williams. And now that Williams has gone with Hatton, I think uh, Eddie Lamb's certainly a good trainer, but I think Hatton will suit Williams more than Eddie Lamb, just because Hatton was the same build and his brain works purely on how to break down taller, skinnier fighters. Yeah, you've spoken to Daryl. How's he been? 
I spoke to Darren and I spoke to Hatton and they're both absolutely chomping at the bit. I, I mean, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm always, always a little bit nervous when you, you're, you're rolling the dice with a fighter because there's a chance, you know, Jermaine Smile pushed him very, very close last time. But I, I just think with the, the preparation, the different preparation... Were you to be a betting man, which I know you are. <laughs> uh, my money on Darren. My money's on Darren. Rounds? And, uh, uh, I think second half. Of the fight. We'll do an analysis next week. Okay, right, that's cool. Next week. And even a senior, you know, a senior's a big underdog with the bookies, but I think he's a good bet. I yeah, mean, I, I really I'd, I'd risk money on a senior, I, certainly. I really think, uh, you know, he, the things with a senior is well, you don't really know. I mean, in the time I've had him, he's had some really sort of shockingly uh, under par performances and some really, really big, massive efforts. And I mean, his fight against John Brennan was, he was in complete control, as far as, you know, from my yeah, perspective. Yeah, well, he stopped him, he stopped him, dominated the fight and stopped him, and I think... Even had a breather in I'm round five. I'm getting the feeling he's someone, yeah, he took a, a round, but then he stops him the next round, yeah. which is fair enough. Yeah. And I think, um, he seems to be like the kind of guy that ups his performance. Some boxers, you know, they can perform there, and when the pressure's really on there, it's a big fight, they have to deliver. Some go up, but some then come down. Well, he's definitely one that goes up, so I think you'll see the best of senior byfield on the night. Um, I think he's got a very tricky style for witness for that kind of boxer to, to take um, on. And I think um, if it was me, if I had McNess, I would have waited a little bit longer. But as a boxing fan, we're going to have a great, great night. And that's on the BT Sport and Box Nation. Uh, next Saturday. Next Saturday, yeah, live. So big night of boxing, big week of boxing next week. We'll see you again with all the breakdowns and the analysis. All right, well, on that point, until next week. Thank you, Adam. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Give us a like.